director of the History Center. And we thought it was very appropriate, since we have this exhibit on cemeteries, to also call attention to uh, veteran memorials. Oftentimes those memorials are in cemeteries, but sometimes they're in public spaces like DeWitt Park. So today, Wheaton has agreed to give us a presentation on veteran memorials of Tompkins Bay and their historical role. Ray holds a degree from Tompkins Cortland Community College in Fire Science. He spent 35 years with the Ithaca Fire Department in several roles as a firefighter, lieutenant, and assistant fire chief, fire marshal. He has been involved in the Civil War sesquicentennial, and he's now involved in Tompkins County's bicentennial. Well, the county will be celebrating its bicentennial in 2017. So Ray, feel free to say whatever else you want to know about uh, yourself. Do we have any veterans in the audience? Do we have any veterans in the audience? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah. Do, do we have friends and family of veterans? Yeah, we all do. Uh, so we obviously know that uh, there's almost everyone has some connection uh, to a veteran. So Ray, thank you very much for you. being here this afternoon. You don't have to put the applause meter up. This is a small enough group. We'll get away with that. Uh, Rose is also on the. Uh, Centennial, Bicentennial Commission for Tompkins County, and that's uh, Fight and Lightning, <laughs> where I think we're into it with both feet. Uh, and this is very appropriate because Veterans Day is November 11th, uh, the 11th day, 11th month, 11th hour of 1918. And that, uh, not quite the uh, centennial of the uh, First World War, but uh, it, it ties into that. Go ahead, Mary. Uh, no, no, use this one right there, I believe. Yeah. yeah, that's it, okay. Uh, I tried to record, and this was somewhat of a challenge for me. I knew a lot of the, the uh, veterans of memorials around the county, and I know I missed one after coming here and seeing one that you folks have that I don't have, but that's not a big issue. And I tried to record as many as possible. And why they were established in the first place? There's a history of monuments, uh, and much of it I know but a lot of the history of these monuments we don't know. They've been lost or else they're only known by a few maybe in that area. Uh, questions actually with a small group, do questions anytime you want. Uh, maybe some directions from where the memorials are. Go ahead, Mary. We've had memorials for thousands of years. That's the Sphinx. Now an interesting thing about the Sphinx, that when the Civil War was over, there was a period of time up to about 1880 that that particular head was used in a lot of Civil War memorials. West Point Cemetery has one to General Butterfield, who by the way was never a graduate of the uh, uh, military academy. He was a very influential politician. Also the Auburn Hill Cemetery in Boston has a sphinx dedicated to the memory of Civil War soldiers. There was a period that we were into Egyptian history big time in the 1880s, a little before then. And so a lot of that stuff came out. Uh, Bunker Hill or Breeze Hill, one of the first memorials but to, to a battle and the folks who fought the battle, but not to the people in general. And that was very common, but not, uh, we didn't seem to recognize the actual veteran. We recognized the folks or a battle. Go ahead. Uh, we also recognize dogs, and I just read about this gentleman just recently, and what they did, they did it at a uh, memorial to all the dogs, so they, the dogs get, get recognized. This was a dog used during the Second World War. Go ahead. Uh, generally constructed to honor a person or a very limited group. Uh, in early history of the public, we were honored the event, usually a battle or an individual. George Washington, the Minuteman on Concord, uh, and uh, Lexington and Concord, we never looked far beyond the event to the whole big picture. Uh, it would take an event much more dramatic and encompassing to remember the events that they represented, and that was the Civil War. The Civil War changed monuments. This is one of the very first monuments erected to a battle during the Civil War. And when I said during, it was erected before the Second Battle of Manassas. There was the first battle that this was erected for. They ended up having another battle almost in the same area. And this monument, it's been worked a little better than that, was uh, 
present at that battle. So that's pretty unique. After the uh, war ended, they uh, put this monument in. It's one of the very first monuments ever erected. Of course, if you've ever been to Gettysburg, this is one of the most elaborate state memorials to a battle. And the nice thing about this is, it lists every known member of Pennsylvania units that fought in the Battle of Gettysburg. And you go and on the side, you can see all those tablets. They go all the way around it, list name. Uh, they're done by regiments. And it's, if you have any relatives, you could, it's neat because you can go there and place them back. But the, not only the North remembered battles, the South did too. And these, during the, during the years after the Civil War, and even a little bit up to today, there was more monuments placed in battlefields to both veterans and battles than any time in our history. Thousands of memorials came about. And these were cookie cutter monuments. This is a southern uh, soldier, and if you look real close, it says CS right there. But the neat thing about it is, it was the same thing, same, same soldier in the north, except they would put Union. And uh, what happened, I, I know of one a case, there's an interesting story about a group in uh, Georgia that ordered a monument, came, and it said U.S. on his belt buckle. So not to be outdone, they worked out a deal with the, with the stone carver, and they just took out the U and the S, it was just, just plain. They got a heck of a deal on it. But they made a lot of these. Generally, they were made out of marble. They were generally um, uh, about that size, a little better than life size, but uh, they were made in both Vermont and Connecticut. Today's Rock of Ages um, quarries is where most of those came from. And they were they were cookie cutter. They made as fast as they could make them, the fast as they could sell. You could go around this part of central New York and you could find similar ones all over. And we will talk about the one in the city cemetery, which isn't there today. Of course we remember the greats. Anybody recognize Grants who? And uh, we, we certainly know how to build and we, uh, uh, that is quite an edifice. It's been restored in recent years and really quite a nice place. Uh, but we, we never had really got into remembering the, the soldier, the common soldier. And the Civil War brought about the largest sustained monument building placement of any war. And I talked about Vermont, Connecticut and uh, carving monuments, and they still carve them, by the way, into this century on a lot smaller scale. In this war, we did remember, thanks to one million plus veterans of that war and their organization called the Grand Army of the Republic, or the GAR. If it hadn't been for them, I think they'd been lost, just like the days when the VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars, have, have tried to perpetuate the spirit of the, the soldier from World War I and World War II. That GAR, they cover both southern and northern. No, the southern actually had the sons. Uh, actually, they actually had their own group, and it was a Confederate war veterans. Very similar in how they were put together, but the GAR was the Union side, and the Confederates were the Confederate side. Uh, Tompkins County's had a share of veterans memorials, both to the dead and the living, and the individual veteran. I broke it down into towns in the county. I'm trying to make it as complete as possible. I may have one or two, which I already said I have. And the information from several sources is as complete as possible at this particular time. Go ahead, Mary. This is the newest one to an actual soldier. This is in Newfield. And I'll go through the Newfield one. This is to uh, Captain uh, Joseph Gregg. He listed the 137th Volunteers in 1862. He fought with this distinction at the Battle of Gettysburg. He's very not a lot known about him. The problem is he died at that battle. He never had a chance to come back and tell his story. And the guy on the other end, who I'm sure you're familiar with, on the other side of the Union line was called Joshua Chamberlain. Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain 
won the Medal of Honor for doing exactly the same thing this guy did on the, on the right flank of the, uh, of the Battle of Gettysburg. But he didn't survive, and Joshua Tra Chamberlain did. Chamberlain, who I, he's an interesting guy, he was a very good salesman, he sold himself well. Uh, this is a picture of his grave. We were there this morning, we talked in front of this for a little while. This was done for the dedication of, uh, uh, in 2000, or 2013 for uh, uh, Greg, and that was done by the Compton's County Sesquicentennial Committee. We did that. Boy, I got that out, that's remarkable. Mm -hmm. Uh, go ahead. This is also a new field, and we see these. These were common right after uh, different periods of history. Ithaca, the city of Ithaca had one after World War I. They were, they're really kind of temporary, they're a board, and this one is there today at the Newfield Fire Station. It's got a list of all the names of the individuals that served in the Gulf War and the Iraq War from Newfield. We had no casualties, but we definitely had people that were there. Now sometimes you'll find the veterans memorials are only dedicated to the people who died in that particular conflict. This one is to everybody. And like I said, there wasn't any casualties there. So that, that sets as is. The only thing, our son was in that war and his name is down there. I can't figure that one out. But I'm not worried. It's not a big issue. I think it's great that people do something like that. This is Enfield. Enfield, of all the towns, I could not really find a good memorial to anyone. But I went to the Enfield Fire Station, and they have a MIA flag hanging there, and of course, New York State flag, and I said, that looks pretty good to me, I'll take a picture of that. They, they, they at least try. This is the town Ulysses. This is Jerusalem Grove Cemetery that has a monument there to the Revolutionary War soldier that you have on, right there in the corner. You have it, uh, and I, I didn't realize I had one. I never knew that. And uh, anyways, this is this was done during the Civil War, and since then it's, it's where they meet and they have their uh, annual uh, uh, Memorial Day ceremony, and uh, they also do a, I believe they do a July 4th event there. That is a naval siege gun, and there's a tremendous story behind that. They brought that up by a train to the lower train station in uh, Trumansburg. They hauled it up by 12 pairs of oxen to the cemetery, and just before they got the cemetery, it rolled off. And, you know, you just don't pick this up even with manpower. They had to establish a crane, and a crane was really a winch that they had to bring in two winches that would, you're talking several thousand pounds there, they got it back up onto the uh, wagon and then hauled it up here. This has been um, been re redone in recent years. It's an interesting place to go. And what they have, this was done through the auspices of the GAR post in Trumansburg. And generally what would happen, they build these monuments in the cemeteries and the GAR post would buy a plot of land. So the soldiers that lived there, doesn't have to be from there, but lived in the in the town or in, in that area. But yeah, they could have lived in Ithaca, but they had the right to be buried there. What kind of a cannon is that? That's a that's a naval siege cannon, and the way you can tell the difference is, you see that back there? That's a hole where a rope would go through. What's and, the big bigger round in there? That oh, that is that is a reinforcing for the breach. Uh -huh. In other words, when the when the uh, the the uh, hole is struck and the, the ball is fired out of it, there is such a recoil, yeah. they can blow the rear end right out. So they reinforced it. Wow. That's a, it's called a paragon. It's the biggest one they ever made. I biggest see. one ever. I yes, yeah, so I know. We'll get to a little paragon, yeah. which is probably two guys can almost handle it. Go ahead, Mary. <clears throat> this is also on Ulysses. This is us. That's Seneca Road out there. This is the VFW. And, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Mary. Go to the next one. There, and there's it tells it was dedicated to the men of World War II and the Korean War, and uh, pardon me, and the Vietnam War at the bottom. But uh, these are from Holly Hollingsworth gave me these. We, you can see it if you're headed headed north on uh, on the Trumansburg Road. Just it's almost outside. Of, it's almost in Seneca County. I mean, you can spit in Seneca County. Uh, 
go to the next one. Okay, dry. Uh, this is one of several I found, but this one, the Sesquicentennial Committee did this summer. This is uh, Julia Cook, who was a Civil War nurse. We had three Civil War nurses from Tompkins County. And uh, we tried to remember them in some way or another. And I'll show you the other one. That She's in Lakeview. That's what I'll picture in Lakeview. But this is in the uh, uh, Evergreen Cemetery in uh, Dryden. And uh, Green Hill. Green Hill, I'm sorry. You'll have to, too many cemeteries. Thank you, Jeff. That's all right. You can do that. Green Hill. And uh, they, they actually have a little plot there for Civil War veterans, but it is. It's, it's, it needs to be filled up. We're out of Civil War veterans to fill it up to it. Uh, anyways, go to the next one there. I put Will Glen Cemetery in simply, I should have put Green Hill in, but I don't remember a name being out there. Go ahead to the next one. This is his job. This is right in the middle of the cemetery. This is dedicated, it's a war memorial dedicated after the Second World War to all veterans of any war. Go ahead there, next one. This is downtown, if you want to call it the Village Square or whatever, in Dryden. And go to the next one. That, uh, hmm, I thought I had one there. That's okay. That's okay. Go back to the other one if you can. This is the Octa Arrow. There it is. There it is. Here, it lists the different uh, conflicts. And uh, the, there's, it's the uh, World War II, uh, Vietnam. And uh, it, it puts down the names of individuals who passed away from the town of Dryden. Before you go on, that fountain? The oh, yeah. The original fountain was melted down to make weapons and ammunition during World War II. So, so this somebody was rebuilt that many years somebody ago. Somebody donated money or did the. Yeah, and no one liked it. I didn't know that. Yep. And it, it was very dry that they were there. It was quite cool that they were there, but I understand <laughs> why it was dry. It's a beautiful fountain. Go ahead. This is at the BFW post in uh, just back, just before you get to driving. This is a, uh, a tank. I'm not sure. I'm not good, good on tanks. Call it a Sherman tank, but it probably isn't. And uh, it's also dedicated to the all veterans of all wars. And there's a little plaque. If you, you can see it just, just about right there. Go ahead. <coughs> Now we get into Rose's territory, and there is a story behind this camp. This is definitely a parrot. It is also a naval parrot. It's got a place where you place a rope through it. Uh, this cannon uh, was part of a great controversy a few years ago. There was an individual in Pennsylvania who was buying uh, armament off from cemetery associations. This one was sold. And I have a mutual friend, well, I, won't, I won't name her because she'll find out I gave her name out, so she'll crown me. But uh, anyways, uh, the Cemetery Association sold the cannon, the, this one here, to that individual at, for uh, upkeep of the cemetery. And I understand their reasoning because it costs a lot of money to keep them up. Well, anyways, myself and a few other folks found out about it, and these cannons, including that tank and including all the cannons, don't belong to the cemetery associations. They still belong to the federal government, and there's very strict rules on what you can do with that, that material. They're on loan, too. Yeah, they're on loan. They're on loan strictly. So anyways, after a lot of uh, hair pulling and uh, hemming and hawing, uh, the individual, we put a lot of pressure on the individual who had bought that cannon, I mean, this guy was a millionaire. He bought a lot of stuff all over the country. And uh, he eventually he was forced to give back a lot of stuff. Uh, I will admit, he had some things that were bought out of private collections. Private collections, there isn't a great, um, I guess you'd call it a line of how, where they came from and how they got there. But uh, we got this one back, and as Rose will admit, that they have a nice new one. What he did was he bought the old one and bought them or gave them a brand new one. A replica. A replica. Was that a can? But they've got that and now that sets in stories. I told her I said I'd like to use that because we got a lot of cemeteries that would look nice in, you know. But 
anyways, that uh, that kind of sets there. And what what time period is that? One? That's definitely Civil War. Civil War. Yeah. And most most of the cannons we've seen are Civil War or directly thereafter. And I'll tell you, it wasn't long after the Civil War they stopped making these kind of cannons and went to breech loading material. I traced the whole travel of that cannon from the time it was found and put it out the ship and then brought back to Rockland. And you and you yeah. can do that with we most. Did that we did that dedication. We did that. You can do that with most of that arm limit because it's all serial number. And it's, it's interesting. There, this one has really got an interesting story behind it. Just to get it back there, the Cemetery Association, go ahead to the next one here, put that plaque on there. And uh, they had a rededication on July 4th, 2006. <coughs> Excuse me. And they put a new, that new base on. And uh, hopefully it'll stay there for another couple Thanks hundred years. Yes, uh, there was some there. I wasn't there for that. Uh, there was something going on. I'm not better than I was. I'm sure. I'm sure. I think. Uh, I think Doug Duell and his cannon. Yeah. We have. A, we have a fellow in our organization has a uh, not a replica, a real Civil War cannon that works quite well yet. Uh, back into Groton. These pictures came from Rose. This is Terrence Graves who is the only Medal of Honor winner in Tompkins County. And uh, this is right on Main Street. Um, there's a little park there. Go to the next one here. But this is the dedication ceremony, correct? Yes. When they brought that in. Yes. Uh, and uh, had, had his family there. He, he died during the Vietnam War. Saving so many others. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's nice. I know Holly Hollingsworth was involved in that deal, too. And uh, they keep it up. It's a nice little park. It's right on right on Main Street. Almost, you saw almost center town, right? I guess you'd call it that. Yeah. Give or take a little bit. Okay. Uh, on to Danby. And Danby's probably got one of the nicest uh, monuments that is a Civil War only monument dedicated to the memory of the individuals who died in the town of Danby. And my grandfather's name is on there. Actually, he's my great great grandfather, but uh, he was in the 109th and he died in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. But his name is on there along with uh, about, I'm going to say, there's about 50 other names on there, broken down as to the regiment they were in. And uh, I don't believe it says, they might say when they, they passed away. But this has been restored by the organization I belong to, the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War. We clean a lot of monuments. We clean this, the town of Danby put this fence around it. It's a beautiful spot right in front of the town hall. The town hall's a really nice town hall. And if there is a center in town in Danby, it's right there, it's right on the road. Go ahead. Lansing, I had a hard time finding much of Lansing until I, I, I the uh, cemetery, um, that's Grove Cemetery. Uh, I says, gee, that seemed like I remember something out there. I have to put firemen's flags out for a couple of paid firefighters that, that are buried there. So Mary and I, well, a couple weeks ago, we went out there, and I got talking to the caretaker. Oh, yeah, we got this right down here. And this was done by, this was donated by Barbara Thusen, who you might know, and in memory of her husband, who was a colonel in the, uh, Army, he passed away a few years ago. I think there's another picture. Yeah, a little closer picture. And it's they call it Lovell, I think it, Lovellville Pine Grove Cemetery. Everybody says Grove, but anyway, it says in memory of Colonel Ralph Thusen. And here, it's got all the names of all the veterans who are buried all in different cemeteries in Lansing and Lovellville. And that had passed away. And she was telling me they had to add, so they were going to shove it down and put in more. And I guess that's a versatile way of doing it. You have to keep up because the paper, after a while, gets a little destroyed. But it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's the only thing they got. At least they're doing something. Go ahead. Now, City of Ithaca. City of Ithaca is, is a toughie. This is uh, in City Cemetery. This is a monument that's, that's interesting in some quite a few respects. It used to have a statue on top. It was made of copper. It was cast copper. And the last we have any record of 
that statue being any place. It was recorded a bunch of college students were dragging it down the road in their Model T Ford, and they had pulled it off from there. And that was in the early 20s, uh, and we don't, I don't have an exact date, we do have a recorded on it, and it never got put back. It was never, the city probably used it for scrap drives during the Second World War, and it probably was, was pieces of it laying in Germany or wherever today. So yeah. Those are cannonballs? Those are cannonballs. The fellow by the name of Danny Wheeler, who's yeah. instrumental in, in doing a lot of this, wants the Sons Group. Those cannonballs he found had a guy who was wanted to sell him. He, he had to know Danny to understand him. He talked the guy out of the cannonballs, gave him the guy. Well, they were putting them together, and they, they welded him into that. Well, they found out they were still loaded. These, oh, are, they, these are actual cannonballs. And what they do, they put a charge in the cannonball, and then it was a, a pre-primer fuse. In other words, they launched the ball, and then somewhere is out there, it would burn down the fuse, and the ball would actually blow up and a lot of shrapnel would go around. And anyways, this stuff was so old, thank the Lord, it wasn't a danger. So what they did, they stopped, they boiled them out. What they do, they boil them out in hot water, clean them out, and then they put them all back together again. And Danny, to hear him talk about it, took three ladders to get this thing on top. You know, three cannonballs, they're pretty darn heavy. And it really looks pretty good. They did a nice job. This, this monument was erected by Sidney Camp of the Grand Army of the Republic. It was erected in the 1880s. It was rededicated around 1988. And has Sydney Camp spelled wrong? Sydney Camp is named after Albert Sydney, who was an ensign uh, in the Navy. He died on the West Coast. His body was brought back and he's buried not far from here. But you have to be careful. Sydney is S Y D or S-I-D, and they spelled it wrong. And uh, I, I still can't get over that. These guys, they, can't blame it on us. This was done by the uh, the, the GAR back then. And uh, anyways, go to the next one here. Is that, was that spelling there up for the group of uh, that soldiers up in there? Or? Yeah, yeah, here's a picture of the next one of the, the two cannons that said oh, all that same group. Yeah, they're all they were all members of the Sydney camp of the Grand Army of the Republic. There's actually a colored soldier buried there. And that's quite unusual. Uh, back towards the end when these camps were really getting low in membership, they started taking blacks in. They did it wasn't the, the norm. Uh, they the GR was very segregated. But these are two naval cannons that set up there. Again, you can see the, the place where the hauser would go through. The idea with that, it was tied to the edge of the boat when it went back. It didn't roll all the way across to the other side of the deck. And what they had was block and tackle, and they, one guy on each side, they could pull it right back up again. After it got loaded, of course. Um, you can see just the edge of that uh, monument, and the soldiers are buried all the way around over to here. Now they're all Civil War soldiers. When the last soldier died, I think the last burial there was 1939, so you were getting right up there age-wise. In fact, I'm positive 1939. That's all Civil War up in there. Just Civil War in that one. Now we'll go to the next one. This is called the John Glenny Circle. It was a Civil War post that went defunct very early, but they had an auxiliary, and the ladies kept this cemetery going. It's called the John Glenny Circle, named after General John Glenny of Ithaca, and he's buried kind of up on the hill there. He was a general during the Civil War of 137th, I believe. But here, these are all Civil War veterans through here and up and around, but down here, there's a few Civil War veterans most of these are World War II veterans. I, I think the city, uh, and I don't think it's bad, I think they, they got in a position where there was an indigent uh, veterans needed a place to be buried, and it was a good place. They knew they were open. I know of a fact there's a lady buried there, it's a husband, a wife of one of them, her husband's buried there, 
And I know of one case in that particular group. In here, there's a baby buried in two. And I take it back. I think they're right there, right there. I don't like the picture because it, it doesn't look like the way it really looks, but it, uh, I don't know, it's out of perspective or what. I took the picture. I thought it, it was better than that. But there's a, there's a, huh? Yeah, you've got to kind of look in the middle to see it good, but the, there's a park bench, a new flagpole, and what we need is we need to put a marker on there that says John Glenny Circle Cemetery. It's a later cemetery. It was established after 1900. Uh, I believe there's also U.S. Colored Troops buried there. One, I know there's a bunch of U.S. Colored Troops buried down here, but not part of that. Um, Let's see. Seems like I had something else I wanted to talk uh, There was a flagpole on there originally. got blown over and we, we, we bought a new flagpole and put up there. The other flagpole was more in the center. Flagpole up in the... Yeah. Was up in the that pole up there, that flagpole? Yeah, yeah. There was, there was a bigger one there. Does anybody change the flag? Or yeah, we take care of the flags as needed. Right. Yeah, usually we, we usually replace them all just before uh, Memorial Day. And Memorial Day for us is May 30th. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's what the tradition was, and that's the way we keep it. Uh, go ahead, next one. Uh, City of Ithmia again. How many remember this on City Hall? Of course I do. Yeah. Where is this city hall? City hall. I'm not. Sh I can't attest to the fact it's still there. It was when I retired. In it was when you retired. Okay. This bounded around a little bit. It was in front of the old city hall, and the old city hall had two steps, like it went up in the porch, and then you went in the building, and it sat in the very front of that. And all and the names on here are only folks. Who died from Tompkins County during the Civil War, during, during the Second World War? Is that the one county. in Wood Park there? No, we haven't got there yet. Wood Park's coming up. That's though. people from the county that died. That's not correct. Just city, not just no, city. Not, not just city. Oh, cool. What's this? I've never noticed it. I'll have to go and look and see. Well, I, 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 I don't know. Really the they should move that to the county building. Pardon me? They should move that to the county building. Well, the county. Doesn't have a lot. Because it's the county. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this probably was established. I don't know the history behind it. Probably was established by Ithaca folks, and they put yeah. the names of of the county folks there. And this, I can remember this. There was a little kid, so it's been from some place at one time. Go ahead, the next one here. This one here. Anybody know where that is? We're in the city. Mary does, yeah. She ought to. Catholic school, back of conception. Yeah. This is a. This this uh, uh, is the monument. Go ahead, to the next one that we can see. It is to John 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 C. Smith, United States Navy. He was on the USS Liberty when it was attacked by Israeli warplanes, and he was he was killed, and uh, he he's brought back. He's buried in the. Uh, and you know that his sister lives right on the block and then falls. That's down. right, that's right. And she and a little bit older than me. I, probably she's in her seventies, I think. I'm gonna right. take a guess. Is that his mother or sister? Sister. Sister. Yeah. But that's that's that is there. And they the Catholic Catholic school put that in and, and it's nice. It's a nice monument to an individual. Go ahead there. Okay, here we are in DeWitt Park. And Dewitt Park's a hard place to get a lot of good pictures, but I, I've got the, the monuments. This, this is, uh, was put in by the VFW, and it, it just recently they put uh, rock uh, and golf members that passed away, and Vietnam is on, you're looking at the Vietnam side, because we have World War II, or World War I on one side, and World War II on the other, and what we had, didn't have was remembering the individuals who actually fought in these later wars. There is a Civil War monument here, which we'll talk about when I get to that point. It's in one of these slides coming up. 
And the Civil War mine is very interesting. Go ahead, Mary. Can I ask a question? Are you saying that? I'm, I'm sure I've seen that. Yeah, no, go ahead. On either side of that forest. Yes, right. You just walk around. With so the, the fourth side is the recent mm -hmm. light. Well, you've got you've got Vietnam, you've got the right. Gulf War, Korean and also the, the gentleman Wars. on the Liberty, I think, is on there too. Korean War, too. Yeah, Korean Korean War too. Was the Iraq War added recently? Yeah, oh yeah. Like really recently. Yeah, but I think it's uh, I think it's they're all combined. We only had a couple casualties uh. there. This is the ded rededication of this. The, uh, really, was rededicating the World War One monument, but it ended up also. A dedication to the entirety of those monuments. I took it. That's a picture of the uh, the program. Go ahead, Mary. You get a little closer view of that. Go ahead. This is the World War One monument, which I think is one of the nicest monuments in Tompkins County. It was rededicated. Have a little closer picture later on. These are all. This is all brass. There's brass here. Well, you see this concrete part, there was actually a brass seal of Tompkins County that sat in there. I was telling Rose beforehand that Holly Hollingsworth knew I was coming here today. He wanted to make sure that I said, that's been missing. They've been trying to find it. And as a kid, I don't ever remember it being there. And I used to be up, up here a lot, sometimes at least once a day. Um, and I don't ever remember seeing that there. It, up until they did the rededication, it, the hole was still there. They planted flowers in it. But it was uh, after Holly uh, talked to the city and they put that in to make it look more uniform. They even looked at putting a piece of granite in there. But he says, if anybody knows where that is, and they have scoured this one. And here, too, they came in and went through whatever archives you folks have. I thought the newspapers were brought but you're saying it, it disappeared a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it disappeared before 1950. I can't. So that might be something the Bicentennial wants to do something and leave. Well, that's where I've been looking at maybe a time capsule. I think would be an excellent place if I get it by Holly. I get through Holly first. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary. Next one. And this is this is the rededication, which was on October 3rd, 2009. Now. You know, I, I, I think it was a convenient date. They did want to do it on Veterans Day, which is the 11th. They, they do always do a ceremony here on Veterans Day. I think they wanted to stay off from that, that a little bit. The only thing is, I think Holly didn't know whether, and I'm serious when I say this, he's not sure whether he was going to make the actual 100th anniversary of 1919. So, I think he wanted to be around to make sure. Now, if he was sitting here right now, I'd be telling that, but I, I'm, I'm sure that was a lot of the reason. He he was instrumental. If you, if you know the guy, you you'll know, know what I mean. Guy. Yeah, and uh, he, he said a lot. He, every, well, he almost find him there every day, but definitely every Thursday they're in there cleaning the park. And this park's a hard place to keep up. Go ahead, Mary, try the next one. Now, this is right next to the World War II monument is a Civil War monument. The city of Ithaca never had a Civil War monument. In 1870, there was a commission formed to make an appropriate monument, and at that time, they didn't know where they were going to put it. And... Um, 18 or 1870? What's that? I said 1870. Okay, yeah. This is totally unrelated to that. And, eight, and that commission was still meeting in 1922. They never could make a decision on what they ever wanted or where they were going to put it. It sounds familiar for, for Ithaca. They have a lot of a lot of committees, and sometimes they don't ever do anything. Well, that definitely happened. Eventually, the committee was gone. And in 1988, a fellow named Danny Wheeler, who I talked about a second ago, he was the he was the charter member of the local group of Sons of Union Veterans. He got together with a couple of folks. They had a fundraiser. He got a guy who donated a lot of the stone. It cost him about $4,000 for that stone. Stones like that are terribly expensive. They carved in all the groups that they know, know and I think they've got them all, that came from either Tompkins County or Tompkins County area that drew men into them, and they're all listed. 
And um, it tells a little bit on the bottom, you know, the group and what the, what they actually did. I don't mean the group that established that stone. And that sets between the bushes. We have to keep creaming the bushes out. They have a tendency to grow too fast. But that is really the only Civil War monument in, time, in, in the city of Ithaca that was where the rest of the monuments are. So do you, when did they put that there? 1988, during the during centennial. The centennial. That was part of it. Uh, Marcia and that group yep. did all the lampposts. Yep. And Danny worked with them to get that put in. That was during the, the city of Ithaca. Is there any list of Ithaca of, uh, of the Civil War and death or all? Place at all in no, not as not on a monument, but there are lists. There's lists out there. Actually, thanks to the internet and stuff like that, there's, it's pretty pretty easy to find people yeah. today. What's that symbol in the middle? Is it this is the this is a symbol for the Grand Army of the Republic, oh, okay. and it, and it said this would be this was always on their badges. And, and so you see a flag holders at the cemeteries. We yeah. Civil War uh, actually, we just saw some at the cemetery yeah. today when I was in Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see the same thing. Right. That's right. But on their badge, it, it, it's the same thing. It says charity, fraternity, and loyalty on each one of those points. And I know I'm missing, what, one, two, three. I'm missing two, but there's two other things that says two. Uh, okay, next one, Mary. This is the World War II monument, fairly new. There is a week on there. I have a cousin who was killed during the war. Uh, and uh, we had just one, Al Hiles' brother, his name is on there. I'm sure you know Al some of the brother. Yeah, his brother died. Uh, I take it back, Al Hiles' brother died during the Korean War, and he's on the you other. Know, I had a picture in the paper years ago that had a children's home down on Seneca Street. Yeah. And, and Al Hyde pointed out, he said, that's me in the group there with a, oh, wow. I forget who the leader was there, but, but, uh, but I mean, what happened to his family? I never he, he, his family was always around, but they didn't take care of him or his brother and sister, too. But anyways, that, this is more in my era, and I, I knew some of the folks. I didn't know them personally, but I knew their families, because the war was over after I was born. But I, I knew their, I knew the families. Yeah, and I tell a story about the Perry Elser on Stone. Yeah. Whose name is there? Oh, okay. Well, we, we got over to Bingham's and they lived together We're back in 1942. And uh, he said the paratroops are too dangerous. So we, he joined the Air Corps. So he, got, he died in a plane crash oh, in 1943. Plane? Wow. So what's dangerous? Yeah, yeah, that's true. The weed that's on there is Robert G. My brother was a Robert, but not G. He was a Robert B. But and my brother was at Pearl Harbor when it was bombed. But this fella here was, if you remember, Wheaton Sheet Metal. It's his son, and he was a uh, he was a blip pilot, and they would go out from ways and follow the um, follow the convoys going to going to England. For, and they were submarine checkers, and they actually could bomb the submarines. Well, happened, they never came back. Uh, the whole, him and his whole crew, they never came back in. Go ahead. This is probably the newest uh, Civil War veterans monument in the city. It's on Cleveland Avenue. It's a gigantic black, and it is beautiful. And, and what it is, all the U.S. colored troops that were from or came back to Ithaca, and there's a you can you can write a whole book on these guys because a lot of them left Ithaca, went and fought, and then came back and brought their friends with them, and their friends a lot of them stayed. Well, I got a sister. Come on back. We we'll meet your sister. And they got married, and uh, that was that happened. And this group here is there are a few in there that died during. Uh, there's a Smith, and he's buried in the city cemetery. There's Isaacs, they're buried in the city, city cemetery. Where is that stone located? This is located right next to the Amy Zion Church on the right, right hand side. There's kind of a little park they made there. It's well worth going down and taking a look at it. It's beautiful. And that is really the newest, newest one that we have. And they dedicated that uh, 
few years ago. I know Carol's husband was still doing well that night. That's where I first met him. Carol came and saw him. Well, it's, it tells who they're dedicated to. Good yeah, yeah, at the, at the bottom. And this was done by members of the church. And uh, Roy Lipscomb, who was a police officer who retired before I did, he uh, was instrumental in getting this this done. I think he's one of the uh, trustees or deacons. I'm sorry, deacon of the church. Go ahead, Mayor. Okay, anybody know this war memorial? It's Baker, well, you're close, it's Baker Dorms. Lions Hall is to the uh, right, Baker Tower is to the left, and that's called War Memorial. And inside here, I did not go inside because I ended up taking millions of pictures. There's names of Cornell grads who died during the, second, during the First World War, pardon me. And they're, they're, they're in marble tablets through there. It's, it's a beautiful place, and that actually Cornell is uh, refurbished it a lot during the past uh, few years, but I don't think anybody ever knows it exists. I, I didn't know that. I mean, I knew about the flag money, but I didn't know the names were in some. Yeah, just inside. It's, a, you know, it's like a, it's a walkway. Uh, but just World War One. Just World War One. I think this was done in 1923, uh -huh. if I remember correctly. Go ahead, there. Uh, does anybody know about this one? Yeah. Well, no, no. You're, it, it, it may look like it. If you go, it's, that's right. You're you're right in the right neighborhood. If you go down, you're on University Avenue. This is Corn. This is Cornell's Avenue right here. Pardon me. It's right next to the city cemetery. Yeah, city cemetery. Uh, and the fireman's fireman's plot is right here with the, the obelisk. Go ahead to the next one. This is in memory of Morgan Smiley Baldwin. Cornell class of 1915, who fell, and it's sad because he fell September 29, 1918, within a couple of months of the armistice. Uh, he was a member of uh, Delta Phi, which is just across the way, and they supposedly own this. Cornell has done a lot of, well, Cornell's done some refurbishing. You can see it needs a lot of work. They didn't do the stairs, they condemned the stairs for a while, they couldn't be used. What street did you say it's facing? Pardon me? What street is it facing? It, or is it inside? It, it, it's, it's on Cornell Avenue, on Cornell. where Cornell Avenue comes down from uh, Stewart, down to University, and what it was, it, it was neat. It's a little shortcut you could take from right up the hill. It's really neat stairs. Yeah, and, and it, it's been there, it, it was done in the 20s, and definitely dedicated to him, and they used to take care of it, and they be, um, a Delta Five, but they don't. That's too expensive. They can't even take care of their own wall. That's they've got a beautiful stone wall out there. Cornell's done a lot to this, but there's a lot more it needs to be done. Isn't that fraternity right at the back of that? That's right. It's in front of it. Who used to be in that fraternity? Cornell. This this fellow here. Cornell and Well, it was the old Ezra Cornell original house. Oh. His family lived there. He never did. Oh. He had, had it built for them, and he passed away before it was finished. Go ahead, Mayor. I think you went the wrong way. There, yeah, okay. Well, this is, this. you know where this is? This is a little tough. This is Cornell again. This, would, this is to the, uh, Korean, War and to the Korean, Korean War veterans and to the Second World War veterans. And Annabelle too. That's right. Annabelle and, between Annabelle and Myron. And the Vietnam War too. Pardon me? Vietnam War. Yeah, well, they added the Vietnam War later and I I'm going to say it's got Korean War and there's also a second world war one around the corner. And uh, when they dedicated it for the Korean War vets and the and the uh, Vietnam War, a guy by the name Dick Cheney, who was the Secretary of Defense, was the one who gave the keynote. Oh, really? I have a I, I didn't make a copy because I these slides can get a little long and we're pushing time here. Uh, the uh, and have a small group, I don't care, I'll keep it forever. Uh, the, uh, Dick Cheney was there and he gave a keynote address on, at, uh, on Veterans Day. Wow. That Holly had that. Uh, that must have been the newspaper too, you can get them, right? Oh, I'm mad. Yeah, I'm mad. Go ahead, Mary. This one here is Caroline, and I never got here, but Holly sent me this. 
This on White Church Road? Yeah, just as you go White Church Road a couple of hours. Yeah, he Coming told me, and I, said, I didn't realize there was anything yeah. there. Go ahead and ask them there. I think that they're both. This is, uh, they're in, in the memory of. And they added the Vietnam War afterwards. Go ahead. This one, is, this is Lakeview Cemetery. I have one slide of Lakeview. This is Suprinia Bachman who was the second Civil War nurse, and she is buried there. And uh, I, as long as we're on Civil War nurses, I need to say real quick, there will be another monument to the Civil War nurses who came from Tompkins County. It'll be in the front yard, I believe, when Tompkins Portland Community College is being, it's being fabricated now. I don't know how much construction. It'll be dedicated next spring. Next spring. And, uh, Anyways, we dedicated this through the uh, Sesame Centennial Committee. Uh, there is another Civil War nurse, but uh, she is Aunt Polly, Sarah Palmer, Palmer and uh, she's buried in Des Moines, Iowa. And I've been, we have kids out that way. One of these days I'm going to get there. Uh, I have pictures of her grave, but I like to do my own. But uh, very interesting people. They were never considered part of the military until almost they were all gone. And then some of them were able to get. Uh, Aunt Becky. Yeah, Aunt Becky. Yeah. And uh, I say Aunt Polly because there's somebody else Aunt Polly. Yeah. Uh, they were considered uh, uh, not part of the military, but uh, eventually they did get military pensions. So today they're considered part of the military. They get all. They can get military stones, and I see occasionally a Civil War nurse out there. Where is that located? This is located. If you. You know where you were talking about the Jewish cemetery and then the Greek cemetery or anything? that? You keep coming down, coming down. It's on the right hand side. If you're coming down, it's on the left hand side. This is the gorge over there, and the road is over here. You can't miss it because it's the only flagpole there. We put a flagpole there. Go ahead. Okay. Anybody recognize this? Where this is? Not many people know this one exists. Is that the Catholic? Calvary Cemetery. This is a World War I monument, and it sets really right in the middle of, not quite in the middle, but close to the middle of the cemetery. You have to walk over to it, you couldn't even drive to it, but in there. An excellent tells about it to the uh, heroes who served in World War I uh, from the uh, Immaculate Conception Parish, and uh, it's only people who belong to the, basically the Catholic Church in Ithaca. But this Captain Michael Conway belonged to Ithaca Fire Department, and uh, he was, he died like two or three days before the armistice. And Conway Park, I believe, is named after him, uh, which is down by us, where we live down there at Castillo Street. Uh, oh, that's named after the former, well, former mayor. Yeah, well, this is, this, the, he was the former mayor. He was uh, on the Common Council, this guy here. But that, he was older, I don't think so. I gotta, we gotta check that. But it, a lot of people think it's named after Conway, the band leader, who came from. They're all the same family. But uh, I always took it that that, from what I read, that it was this guy here. And he was a, he was an alderman. If you go in the, go in the hallway at the vets, they actually have a picture of him. He tells, and I think he belonged to Company Five. But anyways, I'm sorry. We digress. Uh, historical value, again, it's a place to remember those who served and gave their all. And it's a great place. Most of these uh, places are used today for ceremonies uh, of some sort. Place to recognize the periods of American history when they served. Place to find and enjoy family history, and that's very common for genealogy, to go to the cemeteries, uh, go into DeWitt Park, and look at names. At least it gives you something to start to go on. All the military names are generally always available, either you pay for it or you, sometimes this weekend I see they're free on, on uh, one of the uh, search engines. Uh, what is, I don't know. I see, yeah. And uh, it's a place to gather for holidays, so aside from bathrooms, past and present, which they do. And the fact that we do care and we do remember. Go ahead, Mary. Um, did this help? Did you learn? Maybe some places you didn't know before. Um, I hope it's brought to light uh, 
somewhere else you've never heard of. Uh, maybe you've never heard before. Any questions, that kind of thing, which you pretty well, go ahead. Go ahead to the next one, Mary. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when we get done, I have a comment for you. Okay, you need to check into. Uh, these are the special, these special thanks to these folks. Holly Hollingsworth, who is definitely the keeper of Whip Park. Danny Wheeler is the past commander-in-chief of the Sunday Union Veterans of Civil War, the national organization. He lives, lives in Danby. Uh, Rosemary Tucker, I don't know exactly who she is, but she's a drop <laughs> town historian. Hi, Rosemary, thank you. Uh, Carol Kamen, who's a yeah, and I didn't put a Y on County. We missed that one, Mary. Yeah, but you got to put another N on Kamen. It's two Ns. Oh, okay. Well, I really butchered her, but we won't tell her. We'll go. Uh, Al Chafee, the town of New, uh, Newfield Town Historian, and a lot of veterans and their successors have been kept alive. They're lasting heritage for all of us. And I like Bob. I catch other folks. My grandfather, who I remember as a kid, told me about playing with the brass buttons on his dad's uniform. Wow. His dad's uniform. That's my great grandfather. He died in Vicksburg, Mississippi. He's buried there. Uh, during the Civil War. So those, those kind of things, we, we get those little tidbits that come down from families, and that's what makes this whole thing work. I think, go ahead, I think that's the last slide, I may be wrong. Oh, these are other presentations we've done. Our, we, some of them we like to do, some of them we've done. <laughs> go ahead, Mary. I think there's another one. That is that's a big shot in doing years ago, before the cemetery. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that people got away from that. People don't respect well, their ancestors like they used to. Ray, are you worried that, are you noticing in the groups that you're involved in, are you worried that there's not another generation coming yeah. up to continue some of this? I do, that bothers me, but there isn't a lot I'm gonna do about it. We try to bring young people in. I have a grandson that's involved, but it's a different world when it comes to people who passed away. Well, you know they have a soldier's day at the high school. Yeah, that's right. You and I have done it once. Yeah, and uh, that, I mean, that shouldn't seem real interesting. Yeah. Although I said in one of those that somebody else was doing a third veteran and they got bored. I said, <laughs> I said, these students don't need to get bored. You know, they already bored. You don't blame, you don't blame the kids for getting So I try to get, you know, I've been doing that 18 years and I try to get a little humor in it. And I, and I get my love life in it. And my <laughs> Grandson who knows knows Bob. He he uh, he asked me about you. You bet. He, was he in one of the classes? I no, no. He was at Lansing, and you and, oh, and he, you and him. In fact, he he couldn't come this year, and you weren't in Lansing this year. Uh, you missed. He said you had a uh, you were in Bath at a reunion. Oh, yeah. at the Bath uh, uh, Hospital over there. The, with the uh, POW. Yeah, POW. That's what it was. Yeah, they didn't have that for every September there for. Uh, we looked that up when we were heading to Florida one time. This big old, uh, in uh, South Carolina, or I don't know. We looked at the, uh, it's on an old Civil War cemetery, the, where the former mother, where the POW is. Oh, oh, in Andersonville, and, probably. Uh, so we stopped there and, uh, on the way down, and uh, it was interesting. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I was, well, I wanted to say thank you. I, I come partly because I'm a involved with the History Center and I also teach eighth graders U.S. History. So everything you shared with me, I will do my best to carry Great. forward. Um, I actually think that, like all of us think, oh, you know, these young students aren't interested, but when you make something real, they get very curious. And so, like some of the images, like when we talk about World War One, I, I'd love to just say, here's the places around. I will travel up to Whit Park, because I know that one, and some of them can get there. But I have students from Danby, well, not Caroline, but I'm just saying that they, when they, when you put it on the map, to me, local history is a way to make them maybe kind of cultivate their interest, and it becomes real to them. And, I think they and that's that's so important. And I, I, there was a lot of years that a lot of these monuments got forgotten, and it's only been in recent years. I think every time you have a a 100th or 50th anniversary, those things get brought back up again, but then they drop down again. Uh, just, we're just coming off the, uh, the Sussex and Civil War, 
and uh, there's, there's all sorts of books have been written all of a sudden, people have a lot of interest, but they lose interest. Now we're into the First World War, and there's that same, for, not, as, not as great, but we don't have as many people involved in the First World War, even though we may have some relatives there. Right, and you, you need to look into Willard Strait Hall. Because I'm sure I read in one of the, the papers when, was, when other research come across, and I remember reading out of my print, that he was in World War I mm -hmm. and he died. Not of war injuries, but he died of the Spanish flu epidemic. That's during, correct. So that and, and kind of is a memorial to him. Yeah, and his, his family um, built it for him and it's named for him. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. kind of related to him as a veteran. The thing is, uh, I can give you a real quick synopsis on Willard Strait. Willard Strait, the old man, yeah. was part of the Wilson administration, and he was a, um, we've been doing a reading at Newfield Library, that's why I never knew as much about Willard Strait, but he was on one of the war commissions uh, in the Wilson administration, and it was his son that had went to Cornell and, yes. and, and died. Uh, like you say, the Spanish flu, like yeah. a lot of them died. Of them. And uh, he, and the only thing is, that there's what they call a memorial room up there. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find anything from anybody that knew why it's called the memorial room. I'm sure it's memorial to Willard Strait. I bet she might, yeah. if anybody. I haven't talked to her about much yeah. of this. But. This was a real service no, to do so thank you, because we're also post the PowerPoint presentation to our website, because it's really nice that yes. you've gone through and tried to identify. Can you get that back to me, the, there's the presentation. Are you good for me? We'll, we'll send it okay. to you. So we'll, well, we'll, I see, we'll, I see Ryan over once in a while. We'll copy yeah. this before you leave. And uh oh, oh, oh okay. okay. But we'll yeah. post it to the THC Web the History Center. Oh, you can do that? Oh, and yeah, then yeah. I can get my PowerPoint.